Hello everybody, this is Ryan with Cybersecurity TV coming back at you with uh, video 9 of the Amazon or deploying Amazon services with best security practices in mind. This is video 9, deploying a secure S3 bucket, uh, which is simple storage in AWS and integration with EC2 instance and AWS CLI. Um, so we've all heard that you know S3s are um, unsecure. There, um, you know, there's issues with them. Um, basically, in this video, is going to show how easy it is to secure a bucket, to implement security procedures that will just ensure that no one can take any of the information from your bucket, whether it's from a home laptop, whether it's from an EC2 instance, and the like. So, what I'm going to show here is I'm just going to show just a basic, which is a basic overview of kind of what we're dealing with here and um, so basically there's two different methods so the first method is an EC2 instance here the EC2 instance must have the access to query write delete modify from the S3 bucket via the IAM role and then the bucket itself only allows if we look here it only allows AES 256 encryption to be copied into the bucket from authorized sources so what that means is if I had another EC2 instance that did not have the IAM role attached to it, I could not actually write to this bucket, modify, delete, anything like that, or even see it for that matter. The second method is actually using an IAM role uh, user, which in this case is going to be called test S3. The IAM user has access to connect to the external API for S3 bucket to have programmable access. This user does not have access to log into the console. However, they do have IAM access to the API for S3 to see this specific bucket. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and jump right into it. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to look at is really um, one thing that you can Google here is protecting Amazon Web Services S3 AES 256. Um, like I said, there's been a lot of issues with S3, so Amazon made it a point to absolutely make sure 100% that this does not happen again, and I and I surely believe that. Um, this will actually kind of explain server side encryption. Um, which basically is about protecting data at rest, as it says here. So basically what that means is uh, you basically have this statement in your policy that basically only allows you to talk to your bucket and if only if you're using server-side encryption, and it's true. Um, so basically what that means is that you're only allowed to put an object right here if you have those settings checked and AES-256 is, an, is enabled on the bucket. So what we're going to do is we're going to check out the IAM role for this user. Um, so we'll go back to user couple users here. Here's the test three account. So what I want you to do is uh, I've already kind of pre-configured this to make sure that the video isn't too long. However, you just create your own user. You only give it, um, we'll just go here. You can only give it programmable access. And then once you create the user, you just want to uh, create a, a policy um, and all the information will be um, available as requested. However, if we look at this policy here and we click edit the policy, there's actually a nice little visual editor that kind of gives you the information that you need. There's one action for S3 and then three actions. So the service is S3, it lists all buckets. So what this means is that it, it's able to list all buckets. There is a list bucket um, command. However, it's a little more difficult to, to get that going without having this specific uh, resource now even if you list the buckets you won't be able to actually go into them you won't be able to write to anything else only the ones that you actually have access to so down here we actually see that we say read get object write delete and then put an object in our resource secure bucket is easy in this case if we go back to our drawing that is actually the bucket that we're that we're talking about today so we'll go ahead and cancel out of this and then we'll go to our ec2 console um, we'll get that going. Then we'll actually go back to the role. So we see, we see this role here that we created. It's a basic S3 access. It has that policy that we created, the same policy that we were looking at before. Edit policy here. It has the same ones right here. Same ones. So this is really the same rule in general for both of these. Um, and then if and the actual rule that we'll be using is actually this dev pool EC2 access. If we click on it, we actually have that that um, policy attached to it, so that's the only access that this uh, role would ever have. So we go to the EC2 management console, we have one running instance, we'll go ahead and click here. We see the one that's actually running, and if we look, here's the IAM role, so this this server itself will actually only have access to that bucket if we click on it. It'll take us to that, and we know that it only should have access to that. 
So we'll go ahead and open our command prompt here. We'll bring it over. So we're actually on that server. And if I do an ALS or AWS, so this assumes that you already have a, a, a AWS CLI installed. If you don't, you'll need to install it. Um, I can definitely do a video on that. Um, but you just do basically AWS configure and then you actually set up the IAM user. So I'll just kind of go over that real quick. The IWS configure, it's actually set up with an access key, um, a secret key, a default region, in my case, it's US East one. And then from there, um, we're actually able to, you know, go from there and, and figure out, um, you know, what else we need to do. So from here, we'll actually just go and we'll go ahead and look at that real quick. So basically, when you create this user, you'll actually get a programmable access. So under security credentials, this is actually that access key. You just need to create an access key and put in those credentials onto the server. Once you've done that, you should be able to do any of this configure without an issue. So in this case, we're going to do AWS S3 LS, which actually lists the bucket. So we're, we actually should be able to do this right now. So if we look here, the user is actually using the, this is using the EC2 IM user only though, to actually list the bucket for us. So we're able to do that. We're not able to, to do anything else, but we're able to do that. Now we do have access to write to the bucket. So if we do an LS on this directory, I just have a test file here. We'll do AWS S3 CP, we'll do S3, and then we'll do secure bucket is easy and we'll put it in this file now we're going to just try this command and see if it works and we'll do um uh, let's see following paths scroll up here just a little bit okay we'll try this command again so now, now what we're trying to do here is we're actually trying to copy that file here into that bucket. Now we're getting a deny. Now the reason that we're getting denied is because we're not actually using this the the SSS, so the secure um, the server side encryption. So we have to specify that anytime we specify or we're copying something over. So it's SSE dash dash SSE. And now it's actually uploaded. So if we go actually to that S3 bucket go to it, we refresh it. Now we're can, now we're actually we're actually allowed. And if we click on it, we actually see that it's actually got AES encrypted. It actually has a link to it. So we know that it's encrypted within our bucket. We'll go ahead and delete that. So that's really cool to know. So now if we go back to the bucket, um, so the best way to protect your um, your buckets basically is when you create the bucket, you click on it, you click on, um, you obviously want to make sure that it's not public. So in this case, it's not public. Click on secure bucket. We'll go back to the properties of it. We'll make sure that default encryption AES-256 is here. And then we'll make sure that that's there as well. And then we'll actually go to permissions and bucket policy. So this is probably the most important thing right here because this will stop anyone from, from actually connecting to it um, and putting anything on there or putting anything in there without it being encrypted. So this basically specifies that if you talk to this bucket, you have to have AES-256 encrypted. It has to be true, and it's only that bucket. Um, so that's really what that means. So the other thing that we're going to look at is we're actually going to look at the CLI um, from our workspace here, or from our system here. So we're actually on a local system. Do an AES configure. It's actually created with the same information as before. So we'll do an AWS S3 LS. Secure bucket is easy. This is kind of the same thing that we need to do. So we're just going to test this. We're going to look and see if there's any, any files in here. So we'll do a test. So we'll do AWS S3 uh, CP test. And then we'll do S3 colon colon. And then bucket is easy. We'll put it over and we'll see if it goes. And it won't because in this case I didn't do SSS, SSSE. And now it's uploaded. So what that means, what, what we've basically been able to prove is that we only have full access to the box because we are an IAM access user. We have authentication and credentials to do that. And we're copying over only secure content uh, with the bucket that we have access to. 
and that's truly it. That's really the best way to protect um, an EC uh, an S3 bucket using EC2 or through the command line. And this is really this is stops just pretty much anyone from from tampering with it. Um, obviously, it's not publicly facing either, so there's even another uh, stipulation to that, and it's even more secure. Um, and then obviously, there's only IAM users. Um, and then if anything does change, you would have full um, logging with config. Um, via the APIs, and then you would have any other type of logging for IAM when they log in, um, et cetera, et cetera. So hope you enjoy this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please move on to the next one. And uh, thanks so much.